What's up, YouTube? Right along with us as we take an adventure along the Blue Ridge Parkway. We don't need a destination. Let's go where the river's taking us. Hi, I'm Bill with Cotty Wampa Overland, and this is Jeremy with X Grid Campers. They have just opened a new facility in Knoxville, Tennessee, and on June 24th, Come and hang out with us there as they have their great open house. Yeah, so we call it a grand opening. We're going to have about 15 different trailers uh, uh, in the showroom. We've got about a 20,000 square foot facility. Uh, and we're going to have uh, live radio broadcast. We'll have uh, speakers and guests. All of our brands are going to be represented. So please come out and uh, come out and join us for the festivities. So in addition to campers, X-Grid not only does eight different manufacturers of campers, you can get iCamper there, you can get Bush Company, anything that you need overlanding, Knoxville, Tennessee at X-Grid Campers is going to be your overland go-to location for the East Coast. This adventure started early one morning from our house in eastern Kentucky. The plan was to make our trip all the way to the northern end of the Blue Ridge Parkway in Afton, Virginia, meet up with a couple of friends, and make our way south along the Blue Ridge. The Blue Ridge Parkway is touted to be one of the most beautiful drives in the United States. We were really excited to be doing it with the new Expedition Voyager trailer from x -Grid Campers and our friends Jerry and Lee. In Afton, Virginia, the parkway starts at mile marker zero, and you travel along the Appalachian Mountains to mile marker 469 in Cherokee, North Carolina. The northern part of the route is filled with all kinds of old history, such as this old farm. This farm is a very cool replica of what life would have been like along the Appalachian Mountains several years ago. After the farm, you continue gaining elevation and seeing more and more of these scenic overlooks. If you watch very closely, you might see all kinds of wildlife, such as bear. We didn't see any, but I think Aspen smelt something along the way. We had met Jerry and Lee about 11 o'clock, so it wasn't far up the road before we all wanted to stop and grab some lunch. Sweet, my first dirt road. There you go. Yep, you heard that right. This was the first time that Jerry had had his Mojave off the road. We weren't planning to get too far off road at this point. We just wanted to get off of the parkway just a little bit to find a nice little picnic site other than just the regular overlook. What we ended up finding was a perfect campsite. With a quick lunch, we were back on the trail and making our way on south along the Blue Ridge. When I hopped off this little forest service road, I really didn't realize where we were at, but we were on the Bald Mountain Jeep Trail. This is not one that we've done in its entirety, but it's definitely one that we're going to come back to.
Like I said before, the northern part has some farms, and I've got to tell you, it's some of the most beautiful rolling hill farm country that I have seen. After driving a little bit further along the parkway, it was time to get off of the blacktop again and get a little bit of dirt road therapy. As you can tell from the bridges, the roads that we chose to hop off of the parkway on paralleled the parkway, but it was a lot of forest service roads that were gravel and some of them were even dirt. After hopping back on the parkway, we had to make a stop at Otter Lake. After spending a little bit of time here, it was just a short piece down the road before we stopped at the James River Bridge. Mountain, I wouldn't go across that. The James River is not only beautiful, but very historic and instrumental in the development of this part of the country. It is also the lowest elevation on the Blue Ridge Parkway at 649 feet of elevation. As you leave the James River at the lowest elevation, you quickly start climbing and make your way towards the highest elevation of the parkway in Virginia, and that's near the Peaks of Otter. We continued the rest of the afternoon exploring both on the parkway and off, and it started to get a little bit later in the evening. We had all been driving for quite a long time for the day, and it was time to start looking for a place to set up camp for the night. We knew that we were fairly close to a place that we had explored before, and knew that there were some campsites in the area along the Jefferson National Forest. And this is where our search began. Rather than picking a campground along the parkway, we chose to find a dispersed site within the National Forest. We found a really cool place to camp not far off of North Creek. This dispersed location is a great place for us to set up this spot-on GPS fence for Aspen so that he can have a little more freedom around camp. Wait. Good boy. What do you think about your new kitchen? I love this kitchen. It's good. Really now that we know how to turn it on. All right. What are we having? We are having steak fajitas with some tomatoes and onions and some Spanish rice and some refried beans.
The next morning started off pretty early. Right after breakfast, we packed up camp and headed off to see what else we could find. Today, we will be going through Roanoke and well into North Carolina. Our next stop again would truly take us back in time. This stop was going to be at the Maybreed Farms. It's, uh, it's worth the drive. After spending some time at the beautiful and historic Mabry Mill, it was time to continue our way south. There are several of these old historic homesteads to stop and check out, and each one of them are truly unique and amazing. To think a lot of these structures were inhabited less than a hundred years ago, to think what life would have been like back then, it's truly awe-inspiring. Oh, yeah. As we made our way deeper into North Carolina, you know that we couldn't pass up the opportunity to have a rainstorm during one of our trips. But even the rain and the fog rising along the mountains makes for a picturesque ride along the Blue Ridge. By this point in the day, we had put a lot of miles on, and it was time to hop off the parkway, 
and start trying to find us a place to set up for camp. We had already made it to the Linville Gorge area, and that's where we would focus our search. We found a perfect place to set up camp along North Carolina 105. Good boy. That good boy. <laughs> and guess where he goes. The weather was perfect this morning, so we took our time around camp and explored our surroundings. This was also a perfect location for Aspen to get more used to his new collar. Upon leaving camp, we headed back north, making our way towards the Blue Ridge Parkway again. This is definitely one of those areas where you could come up and just spend a whole day looking off of the overlooks and exploring the many, many hiking trails that are in this area. While North Carolina 105 is considered a state road, it's not for your average sedan. You'll definitely want some high clearance to travel this road. This also gave us a good opportunity to just see how good the expedition suspension really is. Just outside of Linville is one of the places that we've always wanted to stop but never have. It's the famous apple orchard at Alta Pass. In addition to the amazing apple pie and ice cream, we got the rare opportunity to sit around and listen to Mr. Carson, the executive director of the orchard, Talk about some of the history of the area. Thomas Jefferson said the turning point in the American Revolutionary War was the Battle of Kings Mountain. And that battle was fought with a thousand men on each side at Kings Mountain. After getting a bellies full of apple pie and ice cream and listening to the tremendous storytelling from Mr. Carson, it was time to make our way on south. The further south you go on the parkway, the higher you get in elevation. 
until you see the point where you see Mount Mitchell off in the distance. This is the highest elevation east of the Mississippi River. We've been by Mount Mitchell a few other times, but it's always been so cloudy and the weather has been so bad, we've never been able to experience it. Today was gonna to be our day. We were gonna to go to the top of Mount Mitchell. From the observation tower at the peak of Mount Mitchell, you can see 360 degrees all the way around you. The beauty from the top of the mountain was unmistakable, but the amount of bugs was up there was unmistakable as well. It didn't take us long to get our feel from the mosquitoes and make our way back down. Not far past Mount Mitchell, you cross the highest point on the parkway at a little over 6,000 feet. In addition to the incredible views along the North Carolina section, one of the other things you'll find are all of the multiple tunnels. There are 27 total tunnels on the Blue Ridge Parkway, and 26 of them are in North Carolina. After another full day of adventure and exploration, it was time to get off the blacktop again and try to find camp. By this point, we had found ourselves in the Pisgah National Forest. Now, this Forest Service road that we had hopped off on was a little bit busy, but there were still several campsites that were available. The only issue with the campsites along this road were they were all walk-in campsites. None of them were drive up. While some of the campsites were really beautiful, it just wasn't suitable for overlanding rigs. So we continued to explore and look for new campsites. And using Gaia's overland layer and the MVUM layers, we were able to identify where other Forest Service roads were and other campsites might be. It didn't take us long at all to find one of the best camping sites that we found in this whole area. Tonight, Jerry and Lee would take over the cooking duties and the Philly cheesesteaks that they made were absolutely mouthwatering. Oh, what? He's already, Jerry's already killing them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you. As expensive as eggs are getting, we got a pretty good deal on this dozen. Out of the whole basket, there were three eggs that were cracked that had double yolks. A lot of people say that you can't use a trailer overlanding on the East Coast, but with a little bit of careful maneuvering and practicing your backing up skills, you shouldn't have any problems at all.
After leaving our third campsite of the trip, we just had a short little section of the parkway left, but it was some of the most beautiful parts of the parkway that we had seen so far. As we got to the end of the parkway in Cherokee, North Carolina, we decided to stop, take a little bit of break before we said our goodbyes, and we were in for a treat that we had no idea that was coming. So we've had a great weekend with Jerry and Lee. This is their first time ever overlanding. So what'd you guys think? We had a blast. Yeah, it was killer. We got hooked a year ago watching your videos and we've started putting this truck together and then hooked up with y'all. And this is our first time on dirt in this vehicle and we've had a blast. That's awesome. So we've done three days, three nights. Um, this one's a little bit different along the parkway. We spent a little more time on blacktop yeah. than we normally do but it was a good opportunity for you guys to get uh broke in broke in yeah, yeah. so good first trip and uh will there be more absolutely we've already planned on changing some things making it easier and hooking up again and we're going places so i'm guessing probably your only regret is having this thing built and not getting out sooner absolutely so folks just get out in whatever you're in uh, whatever you've got is the best rig for you at the time. Get out and use it. Yep. Um, build it as you go. Like Jerry said, he's, he built this thing up. And now we're going to have to make a few changes. we got to make some improvements. So uh, build as you go and figure out what you need. But get out and explore. And buy a refrigerator. Don't bring a cooler. <laughs> <laughs>